Well, the one thing I really love about the Jazz Cruise is that you've got this great collection of players from all over, all over that uh, that you've met individually in different places and maybe played with individually in different places. But now they're all in the same place, and uh, you get to play, especially with the big band. We're all on the stage at the same time, and uh, you know, making music together as a group for the first time. And in as much as it's exciting, it's also a challenge, you know, being the big band leader, to uh, select the right material that's going to enhance uh, all these different voices and put them in the right light and give them the chance to be in the spotlight as well as to uh, have it have the ensemble gel. It's, it's a real challenge. But the other thing I like about this is because everyone's here on a ship, we're kind of captive. It, 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 it gives us an opportunity to hang out, which many times when, when we're all traveling, you don't have that time. You'll see them, you'll play a gig, you maybe have a little time after the gig or on a break but it's, you don't really get to just sit and hang out with them and, you know, cut through all the, hi, how, how's it been after the past year? You know, you can really get into some serious conversations. And I think that's a great part of it, you know, just the camaraderie and, and you have really serious time to share. Uh, the first time I did the Jazz Cruise was, um, nine, uh, I'm sorry, 2009 first time I did a jazz cruise was 2009, and I was hired as a sideman. And in the past, they had brought full big bands on the cruise, uh, and uh, they decided, well, we got all these all-stars, let's try and put them together and see what happens. So that was the first year I was uh, on the cruise, and of course, when you do that, someone's got to bring the music. And uh, some people contributed, but uh, Ken Poplowski, who was musical director at the time, asked me to bring them, you know, pilot charts, and uh, and so as, as it turned out over the course of time, uh, because it was my music, I was rehearsing things, and uh, and then Ken got very busy doing other things, and so they kind of split the duties up and and put me in charge of the big band, which I've you know been leading a big band for over 20 years and uh, helped do that same thing for Woody Herman in the past. So it was a very easy thing for me to do. And uh, that's kind of how it started. The thing that happens on a jazz cruise that doesn't happen, happen anywhere else is that the stage moves while you're playing. You know, so you could be up there perfectly comfortable and all of a sudden you hit a wave and your balance changes and you know, your whole thought process changes. It's like someone like you're rebooting you in the middle of a solo. But so th that is very different, and there's been some very uh, balanced, challenged moments for everybody in the big band. Because especially if you're leaving your seat and you're going to stand up in front of the microphone with nothing to grab onto, it can it can create a little bit of a strange scenario. But that's probably the most interesting thing I find in this versus anything else is that you have to deal with things other than than what you normally would deal with on the bandstand. And of course on the jazz cruise, a great thing is that you have so many diehard jazz fans. You know, you go to a club and play and there's some fans there and some people are there to hear the music and some people could give or, you know, you know, give or take, you know, whatever it is, take it or leave it. But here everybody really is into the music and you can feel that and between the performances, they come up and they're very warm and they, you can tell they really listen carefully and they, know the history and they know where everything's coming from and it's a really unique kind of uh, uh, microcosm to be in for one week.